Senator Milne. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I, I move uh, to take note of uh, an answer by the minister representing the Prime Minister, Senator Abetz. Now, most Australians are aware that our Prime Minister, Mr. Abbott, met with Germany's Chancellor Angela Merkel in Sydney after the G20. It's very well known that Germany takes the lead in addressing global warming. Germany has already made a target of an 80 per cent reduction in their greenhouse gas emissions by 2050, and of course the Europeans have said a 40 per cent by 2030 uh, over 1990 levels. Germany was one of the first countries to put money into the Green Climate Fund. A billion dollars started it. Since then, we have had uh, the United States pledge three billion, France a billion, Japan 1.5 billion, and today even the Prime Minister's best friend in the fossil fuel crowd, uh, the Prime Minister of Canada, Stephen Harper, have said that they are going to put money into the Green Climate Fund, but not so our Prime Minister. Australia continues to humiliate itself on the global stage by refusing to contribute to the Green Climate Fund. So the German Chancellor clearly took this up with our Prime Minister, who told the German uh, Chancellor uh, that we were directly funding climate change programs. And one of the things he cited was the Clean Energy Finance Corporation, the $10 billion fund for renewable energy that was set up by the Greens working with the Labor Party in the clean energy package in the last government. He actually had the hide, Mr President, to cite that to the German Chancellor as an excuse for not putting money into the climate fund without telling her that he has an abolition bill for the Clean Energy Finance Corporation before this parliament. What sort of duplicitous talk is that to another world leader? Here for the G20, and he sits down with Angela Merkel and tells her, oh yes, we're funding climate programs, we've got the Clean Energy Finance Corporation, and then refuses to, doesn't tell her that he intends to abolish it. And we know that the government intends to abolish it. We had uh, Senator Cormann tell us that three times in a debate on direct action, that he intended in the new year to abolish the Clean Energy Finance Corporation. So how can other world leaders take our Prime Minister at his word when he sits down and has a meeting like that, cites three things they're spending money on on climate, and one of them he intends to abolish, and has condemned it from the start, wants to get rid of it, and then goes and tells other world leaders, oh, look, I can justify the money we're spending on the climate. He then went on in the same conversation to cite money that was being spent on overseas aid. He talked about uh, money that was being spent particularly on climate programs in the Pacific. But he didn't tell her, of course, that he had cut overseas aid, that he has cut climate programs from the Pacific, that he has destroyed and abolished the climate change department in the federal government. And in fact, people who had climate change written on their business cards were virtually removed across the government. And yet sits down with the German Chancellor and tells her about the Clean Energy Finance Corporation and foreign aid. Well now, of course, uh, Mr President, I'll have to write to the German Chancellor and say at the time that our Prime Minister met you and told you that, he failed to tell you that he intended to abolish it. He failed to tell you that he slashed foreign aid and climate programs in the Pacific and, in fact, should have been honest with other world leaders. Now, this is becoming a pattern, Mr President, and it's not only about what the impact in terms of what other governments are going to think of us and other people around the world are going to think of Australia in the climate context. It's about whether Australia can be taken at its word. Now, I would have thought in global dialogue all we hear is about developing relationships and developing trust with other countries. And here we have our Prime Minister having told the German Chancellor something which was at best a half-truth, in the sense that he refused to acknowledge or didn't tell her this is something that he intended to abolish and had already cut our foreign aid programs. And now we've got a situation where the rest of the world is moving on climate finance and we are not. The fact is we will not get a global agreement in Paris next year unless developed countries step up and put money into the Green Climate Fund. It's why other countries are now stepping up and Australia is going to be so conspicuous by its absence because it says a rich country 
The highest per capita emitter in the world is too selfish and greedy to put money up, particularly for Pacific Island and small island states, which are already suffering from global warming. It is actually a shame the Prime Minister has brought on our country. Thank you, Senator.